In late December of 2019, I published my worst video ever. It was entitled, What to Expect from Commercial Aviation in 2020, and it had the harmless goal of predicting what big events would unfold that year. Of course, COVID meant that only a handful of my predictions came true, and thoroughly embarrassed, I chose not to repeat that exercise for the next two years. But this year, I am trying again. That's because 2023 is shaping up to be a jam-packed and truly monumental year for commercial aviation. The decisions made and developments that unfold over the next 12 months will help define the industry for decades to come. So, what exactly can we expect to happen in commercial aviation in 2023? Let me explain. First, let's kick things off with Boeing, who's facing a crucial decision regarding its most popular jet. In 2019, two fatal crashes involving the 737 MAX led to Congress passing aviation safety reform. This reform stipulates that, by 2023, all new aircraft must feature a modern cockpit alerting system in order to receive FAA certification. Now, this reform is good for overall safety, but it presents a challenge for the MAX program. You see, the 737 MAX 8 and MAX 9 have already been certified without these new features, but the MAX 7 and MAX 10 are still in the midst of flight testing. As a result, both of these variants will need their systems to be redesigned to incorporate these new features. This will splinter cockpit commonality across the MAX family, and it could cost airlines millions in training fees. Now, the good news for Boeing is that Congress just threw the MAX a lifeline. They passed a bill that essentially exempts the jet from these regulations. As such, Boeing won't need to make big changes that would delay the jet. It's now expected that both the MAX 7 and MAX 10 will conclude flight testing in 2023. But there's still one more obstacle that Boeing needs to navigate. EASA, Europe's aviation governing body, has said it will still hold Boeing to account and will mandate that they incorporate these features if the U.S. government won't. Boeing now faces the prospect of split safety standards, and it will be very interesting to see how they manage this situation in the new year. We could see a few things happen. Boeing could develop new MAX variants specifically for the European market, or they could just refuse to launch the jets overseas at all, surrendering the market to Airbus. Either way, this will be a fascinating development to keep an eye on, and I'll be covering it more in an upcoming video. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Another big decision Boeing faces in 2023 is whether they should build a new freighter. In 2027, Boeing must cease production of its popular 767 freighter, as it'll no longer comply with environmental and noise standards. That's a mere five years away, which is a blink of an eye in the aviation world. Now, Boeing's already started the process of evaluating its successor, and it's currently weighing two different options. One, they can either re-engine the 767, or two, they can build an all-new composite freighter based on the 787-8. But no matter what path Boeing chooses to take, it seems entirely possible that they could formally launch a new freighter program by year's end. But while new Boeing jets are certainly exciting, it's actually an old Boeing jet that will hog the headlines at the start of the new year. In early 2023, Boeing will deliver its very last 747 ever. When it does, it will cap off a 50-plus year run of production, and will end what is arguably the most successful aircraft family of all time. That moment will be both historic and bittersweet for the aviation industry as a whole. Now, let's turn our attention to Airbus, who has some big decisions of their own. Kicking things off with the A220, there's been a lot of speculation that Airbus could build a new, stretched version of the jet ostensibly called the A220-500. In 2022, Airbus's CEO even admitted that the 500 variant is on the roadmap, but that Airbus wouldn't launch the jet until the timing is right. Well, the aforementioned 737 MAX issues could be a catalyst for that launch. The A220-500 would slot somewhere between the 737 MAX 7 and MAX 8. And like I previously mentioned, the MAX family could be splintered by these new safety standards, hurting the plane's value proposition and forcing Boeing to make some tough decisions. 
all of this turmoil could open the door for the A2 2500 to capture some of the 737's market share. The only concern here is that the A2 2500 could cannibalize sales of the A320neo. However, the A320neo is kind of already cannibalizing itself. The plane has sold remarkably well, and its gargantuan backlog will take nearly a decade to fulfill. This fact has actually hurt A320 sales. Allegiant, for instance, was rumored to upgrade its fleet of A320 COs with the NEO, but they eventually settled on buying the MAX because it would be available sooner. The A2 2500 would enter service well before the NEO's backlog is cleared, and it could help Airbus avoid losing more of these deals to Boeing. As such, I think we're definitely going to hear more about this new variant in 2023, with the potential for an official program launch by the end of the year. Of course, the launch of any new aircraft will be heavily determined by the state of the economy, and right now, things aren't looking great. Turmoil in the global markets have sent investments spiraling, and Bank of America is now predicting a 0% return for stocks in 2023. But not all is lost. One asset class in particular excelled in 2022, and it's set to hit record levels of import and export by year's end. I'm talking about fine art. And Masterworks, today's sponsor, is making fine art investing accessible to everyone. Masterworks filed their portfolio of multi-million dollar paintings with the SEC and has split them into shares for people to buy. Not crypto or NFTs, actual physical Picassos and Banksies. And they've been beating the market as of late. They've had four exits in the last three months alone that have netted a 21% return. Now, this is not financial advice, but if you'd like to learn more about fine art investing, I encourage you to check out Masterworks. And if you visit my link in the description, you'll be granted priority access to their platform, which is a good thing because availability often fills up quickly. Now, back to Airbus. Another program that should get some attention in the new year is the A330neo. With both the A330-800 and 900 fully certified, Airbus is in a position to look towards future variants. The most logical next step would be to build an A330neo freighter. It could launch in 2023 for the same reason as the 787 freighter. The 767 freighter will soon reach the end of the road, and a next-gen mid-sized freighter will be needed to take its place. Now, the current generation of A330 freighters compete directly with the 767, but they've severely lagged in sales. I think it could be prudent for Airbus to try to launch a Neo freighter before Boeing announces a 767 successor. That way, they can help build program momentum and secure an early sales lead. An announcement as early as the Paris Air Show in June could certainly make a splash. Airbus will also hog the spotlight when it comes to aircraft certification. It's expected that the long-awaited A321XLR will wrap up its flight test campaign this year. The plane's characteristics means it can open up long-range, thin routes that were previously impossible to fly profitably, which is a win for both airlines and passengers alike. Barring any delays, the plane will be certified at the end of 2023, with entry into service happening in early 2024. So it's pretty clear that 2023 could be a very busy year for both Boeing and Airbus, but there's another manufacturer who's got a lot to look forward to as well. That would be Comac, who just delivered its very first C919 to launch customer China Eastern. That plane will enter commercial service in early 2023, and when it does, it will conclude a grueling 14-year development cycle and six years of arduous flight testing. The next challenge for Comac is to convince airlines outside of China to buy the jet, which is something that hasn't happened yet. But the odds of that happening in 2023 are as high as they've ever been. Sure, the plane still isn't clear to fly in the US or Europe, but the plane certification in China may give other regulatory bodies more confidence to greenlight the jet. It seems entirely plausible that airlines in Russia or Africa express interest in the C919, and I think Comac has a very good shot of securing its first international order in the new year. Stepping away from airplane makers, there's one big airline development that we ought to keep our eye on. A few months ago, JetBlue won a bidding war to purchase Spirit Airlines for a cool $3.8 billion. Like I covered in a previous video, this deal will completely change the low-cost landscape in the US, and not necessarily for the better. But while the deal has been agreed to by the airlines, it is not yet allowed to proceed. 
the U.S. Department of Justice has entered into a lengthy antitrust review to determine whether the acquisition would create uncompetitive market conditions, especially in the low-cost space. Now, these types of reviews typically don't have a set timeline, and at this point, the DOJ hasn't tipped its hand on whether it's in favor or against the deal. However, it's almost certain that a decision will be reached in 2023. Now, the last big thing that we can look forward to in 2023 is actually related to me and my channel. 2022 was a pretty wild ride. We doubled our subscriber count and racked up over 12 million views. And heading into the new year, I have decided to leave my full-time job and focus entirely on you guys. That means you can expect more videos, higher quality videos, and more diverse content in the new year. But I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually pretty nervous. It's a financially risky decision for me to make, but I've come to realize that the channel can only reach its full potential if I throw my whole weight behind it. So I'm asking for your help. I am significantly upgrading my Patreon and my channel memberships, and it would mean the world to me if you consider joining. My members will still unlock early access to new videos and get their names in the credits, but they'll now also start to receive exclusive content. For instance, during my recent Airbus visit, I spent hours talking to their top brass. And right now, my conversation with the A330's chief engineer is available for my patrons to watch. It's over an hour long, and we get super nerdy and technical about all things A330neo. Up next, I'll be releasing my interviews with the head of the A321XLR program, an Airbus test pilot, and the head of freighter marketing. Those conversations will be available to my patrons completely uncut, with little snippets of those conversations appearing in regular videos later down the road. So if you value my work and want to support me as a full-time YouTuber, please consider becoming a patron or a member. And if you're more comfortable making a one-time contribution, I'll be sure to leave my Venmo handle down in the description. Every penny that I receive will be reinvested back into the channel to make the content better. So those are the things that we can expect from aviation in 2023. Thank you all for a remarkable 2022. Have a happy holiday season. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.